Hey, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I uploaded a video, but I am excited to be back with some interesting things. So thanks for sticking around. For those who are new here, my name is Naveen. I post content about databases, cloud and automation. So today I am going to show you about an interesting topic like showing you how you can migrate a SQL database which is running on a higher version to a lower version. Basically uh, there is no direct approach to do this like um, whenever you want to restore or move your data from higher version to lower version so there is no direct approach but like the common recommendations which I see over the internet is like you could use generate script where you can generate the scripts for the schema and data from your source and apply it to the target or you could have your custom SSIS package or BCP scripts to pull the data and load it on your target. Same goes with the backpack. But I felt there is another option which is less explored and I see less suggestions in the internet. So I thought of covering it today. So this is my setup. Okay. So I have a SQL Server which is uh, configured with 2022. That's going to be the source. I have taken a Stack Overflow database and restored it. And with this demo, we are going to see how you can restore this Stack Overflow database from 2022 to 2016. Okay, this is my setup. And in my case, both of these instances are installed i mean or installed in the same machine which is my local laptop okay to keep it things simpler so now so you might be wondering like uh, what option it is okay so in sql server we have a feature called replication so using snapshot replication it is much more easier and more flexible for you to move or migrate your data from higher version to a lower version. So that is what I'm going to show you in today's demo. So let's see it in action. This is my SQL instance. This is going to be our source. So if I go and do version, so you see we are running with 2022 and this is our source and similarly if I run select that version it's going to say 2016 and obviously from the build number also you could see it okay so now as we know we are going to use a replication uh, my distribution is already configured on my source so this is one thing so it is good to have your distribution on the higher version and that's recommended i would say now let's go ahead and set up a snapshot replication and see how we can migrate the data so uh, maybe before we go ahead and do that right so let's quickly ch check about the replication part. So replication. Let me do one thing. SQL Server replication supported scenarios. So I just want to show you the matrix. So what all versions are supported for each replication so that um, you'll know like from where to what versions you could go ahead and configure. Let me, let's just search for this. So 
So usually it will be like n minus 1. Yeah, okay, this is the matrix I was looking for. So in our case, I have a setup where the publisher is on 2022 and I'm going to have my distribution distributor also on the same 2022 version and our subscriber can be of any of these versions. So you don't see 2016 here because it is not officially supported but it works fine based on like what I have done the testing provided like uh, if you, you might you must not having any uh, changes which is going to break like any new PC call functionalities or anything from the code standpoint which is supported in 2022 and not in 2016 then those things would break but in general if you talk about the data and the data movement part this is going to work with this approach okay but this is the official supported matrix for replication okay what is supported but in our case replication is not the main thing so our intention is to migrate the data okay so i just thought of showing you the documentation for reference now let's go ahead and do the replication setup so if you have not configured the distribution maybe that is something which you have to do and then <coughs> go ahead and do the uh, pub publication setup so what i'm going to do is at present i don't have anything i'm going to create a new publication and we'll select the stack overflow maybe i'll quickly show you so the db is of like around 9 gb roughly so data file is like 8.5 gb approx and i do have a data a empty database basically on my destination which is not having any objects at this point you could see it's just 16 mb 88 mb each file data and log file so what i'm going to do is we are going to set up a snapshot replication and i want all the tables and stored procedures if at all if there are any other objects it will get listed here and we are not going to have any filtered row i'll just say create snapshot and keep the snapshot available so we'll go with this option so that our snapshot would be ready and let's set up configure the security for the snapshot agent and next let's say db migration let this finish and done so now we have our publication ready okay so let's look at the snapshot agent okay snapshot agent has never been run let this be as it is we will come to that point in a while now let me go ahead and add the subscription so in our case subscription i will go with the push so push is nothing but like we will have all the agent job the distribution agent job on the subscriber uh, the publication itself from where we are configuring it but yeah it's up to your own requirement so in my case i'm going to go with the push and uh, let me add the subscriber here this is going to be our target okay which is the 2016 instance and this is the database again you don't have to <coughs> excuse me have a same db name you can also have a different db name as well again like we have to set up the security i'll go with run under sql agent account which is fine for me and i'll say let distribution this agent run continuously let's go ahead and create this i'll do finish so once this is done then we will look at other companies like what are jobs is going to uh, move the data is something we will see now let me refresh this 
okay let me go to the job activity monitor okay the first one is snapshot okay so let's look at the history i see it got failed let's see what happened to this okay uh, it's not able to get the account it's not able to basically pull the account information okay access could not obtain information about windows group and my account so let's go ahead and change the ownership of these jobs i don't want it to be under my account i'll just say sa so now let's go ahead and run this okay and i'll go to the job activity monitor again and first we are going to run the and before maybe before even i run that let me go to the um, replication monitor let's look at this view okay so this never started so we can start it from here as well start agent let's see now it's running okay you could see it started generating the snapshot now maybe if i go back and uh, let's see view snapshot agent okay so all the snapshots are generated now so once the snapshot is generated there is a different job which should kick in which is going to be our distribution job but that is still failing let's go and check what happened to that okay this was never started after that right again let, let me go with the replication monitor itself and let's go here let's see if this has picked up okay now this is running so this is the job which is responsible to apply uh, whatever has been generated by that snapshot to the subscriber in this case our subscriber is on 2016 as you can see it started applying all the data so the advantage what you get with this approach is you could schedule your snapshot also let's say you want this data migration or like a data migration from higher to lower version which has to be done so you could go ahead and schedule your snapshots accordingly and move your data at ease so the only downside is during the snapshot generation there would be like few logs which are held on the object but uh, i mean everything comes with the cost right so that is one downside i see but apart from that this works perfectly fine i felt this is one of the easiest option like which you could use to move data from higher version to lower version once the data if it is going to be on one time activity you could do this movement and clean up all your replication stuff okay so as you can see it's like putting all the data here and let's go and check from the management studio as well let me um, refresh this one database and you could see all the objects and if you want to see the row count this is one easy way you see right the data is getting populated that's what you see here and this didn't take much time so you see right about like 8 gb worth of data it happened so quickly you could see the duration about a minute two minutes it took and that's it so we were able to easily move our data from 2022 to 2016. so yeah that's all i had for this video i hope you liked it so please do let me know your feedback in the comment section if you feel there are any other better ways to do it you can always put that in the comments so that everyone will be knowing it and uh, 
maybe we could also explore those options yeah thank you bye